Hey, all this is Rick Keys, Rick Keys Music Caravan Blue Show, and we're still celebrating Alligator Record Label's 50th anniversary. And to celebrate that 50th anniversary, we've got a special guest today. Uh, we've got Chris Stone, Kingfish Ingram. He's going to be on the line here in a minute. So, uh, not sure if he's hey, there yet. Yeah. I got, I got Chris Stone on the line for you. Do. Oh, okay. Hey, Chris Stone, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, Chris Stone, uh, special guest. Uh, I've been doing, uh, you know, it's Alligator Record Label's 50th anniversary. They started in 1971, and you're one of the most recent new artists that joined the Alligator Swamp. So, congratulations. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I really got a cool Alligator. <laughs> I got a really cool alligator record label shirt uh, that I'm wearing for this. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit. And I noticed that you had a huge, uh, in, in our local newspaper here in San Diego, in the arts and culture section for Sunday, September uh, 5th, it was, the whole article was almost about you. So I'm 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 holding that up right now. You got the purple guitar on there, and you got like two whole pages. And the uh, uh, who did that? George Varga. He did a wonderful job, a really uh, wonderful job of telling your story. Good man, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, well, uh, you can go on to the uh, the internet and look up San Diego Union. Look up your name, arts and culture for. September 5th, and you can probably find it, then you can uh, have it on, have it for yourself. So anyway, uh, as I said, Chris Stone, uh, but by the way, well, let me uh, start a little bit here. So it is uh, Alligator Record Label's 50 Years of Genuine House Rock and Music. They have a new uh, release out celebrating those 50 years. And on my show, uh, Chris Stone, we've been... Uh, I've been playing since 1971, you know, with Hound Dog Taylor and all up the line, all the stars that have been on Alligator Records, and now you're on it, and there's a bunch of new new people coming up too. So you're I, you're 22 years old. So uh, in another 50 years, you could be on here for the hundredth anniversary of Alligator <laughs> Record Label. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. If, uh, if that's in the Lord's will. That's the old folks say. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, I've, I've been trying to like uh, hype up alligator, but you know, now all of a sudden you guys got all these alligators let out of the swamp since the pandemic isn't, well, it's, we still got problems, but at least we can get out now. And uh, so you've got a show, you got two shows coming up. So you got one in San Juan Capistrano and that's this Friday. Where's that at? Coach House. Coach House. I think that's the name of it. Yeah, the Coach House. Yeah, the Coach House. That's a great, great venue, by the way. And uh, let me see. Then you're coming down to closer to where I live in San Diego to the San Diego Blues Fest, and you're going to be playing there, too. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I've, uh, I've actually been uh, looking forward to that one because I've seen, uh, I've seen videos of uh, somebody here who's playing at the festival, such as Lucky Peterson, Rest in Peace, and and Chris Kane as well. So yeah, man, I'm looking forward to a big time. Speaking, you got t you have time or uh, you got some place to go because boy, uh, yeah, Chris Kane, he's a he's a new artist to Alligator Record Labels too, brand new. Uh, he's even newer than you. Uh, you came in last year, 2019, and you did super well with uh, your first release called Kingfish that I'm holding up right now. And uh, that one did great. I mean, it, it was a it was a wonderful one. And I guess you got some awards and nominations uh, for that release, correct? Oh yeah, oh yeah, most definitely, man. Uh, yeah, man, that was the uh, that was the record that uh, pretty much done started uh, everything, man. Uh, uh, buddy guy, John Cambridge, you know, was uh, really uh, really good to me for that record, man. And uh, yeah, man, um, I'm I'm really I'm really I was really surprised and shocked at all the all the uh, attention that they garnered, man. But I like to, I really appreciate everybody uh, support and, and how they still have the record. I they're going, you know, people still love it. Well, you know what, I I was re when can I call you Kingfish? 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Since we're on, since we're on Kingfish, I, I didn't know how cool we were. So Kingfish, how did you come up with the name Kingfish? I'm guessing that maybe that's a bird down in the Delta area. <laughs> nah, no. Uh, uh, back when I was in the Delta, uh, the Delta Blues is an arts and education program uh, here in town in uh, Clark, Mississippi. I had two instructors. And, uh, well, I should back up and just say the arts and education and the Blues is their program. You know, when they teach kids and people how to play the blues and how to play instruments. And uh, the two, and two of my instructors, uh, they were two uh, local, but uh, but still uh, nationally known blues in here in Mississippi. Uh, Bill Howard, Matt Perry, and uh, Daddy Rich, uh, aka uh, Richard Christman. Uh, Mr. Perry was the instructor who gave me the name Kingfish, and in, in the class he used to give all the students like different, uh, different like little nicknames or whatnot. And mine was Kingfish, and uh, yeah, I didn't like it at first <laughs> because he said it was mine. Uh, well, he gave it to me and said I reminded him of the old Amos and Andy. <laughs> so I just kept it. <laughs> yeah, so I just, I just, I, I didn't like it, but I, just, uh, but I just, but I just kept it because the king reminded me of the three kings of the blues and the fish and I met Mrs. Rivers. And people in town and school and everything started calling it, so it kind of stuck. <laughs> well, you actually got, you got two cool names there. You got B.B. King and you got Samantha Fish, so Kingfish all in one. Yeah, uh, I remember that old series. I forget who was Kingfish. It was either Amos or Andy, but yeah, that was a long time ago. So, well, it's a cool name. It sticks. And, you know, if you're in blues, you, you got to have like a middle name, you know, it's like, uh, so you got a middle name. I'm still thinking of one for me. Uh, you know, I golf Rick one club, uh, keys or something, but yeah, most people in blues, they've got that middle name, which is cool. All right. Well, so yeah, the article, so anyway, that, that was, uh, last year. So I think you were, uh, you got it for, uh, won a couple awards for uh best album for that and uh, some other things right 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 yeah uh i think it was uh some stuff uh with the blues foundation blues music awards uh i think you got best best entertainer and uh best uh album off that one from from that group oh i lost you Kingfish. Okay. Well, we we temporary. Hello. We temporarily lost Kingfish, so hopefully he'll call back. But anyway, I'm sure he'll call back. Uh, we lost him, and like I said, he's got this uh, great article here in the San Diego Union. Uh, that you should all read. And by the way, if you haven't got your tickets yet to the San Diego Blues Fest, uh, there's still tickets available. I think general admission is only like 40 bucks. So that's pretty darn cheap. And there's going to be other people attending that. Uh, Rick Estrin and the Nightcats, also from Alligator Record Label, is going to be there. And uh, we're going to be playing more of... Uh, Kingfish's music. Hopefully he does call back because we are live right now. I think we just uh, got cut off some way or another. But anyway, uh, we will uh, continue here in a minute. Let's see what happened to Kingfish and uh, I'll be right back. And 